Welcome. Today we'll begin our study of quadratic equations. A quadratic equation consists of a quadratic expression within an equation. And this is going to be our standard form for these things. Uh, before we get into how to solve this, that is how to find the solution to such an equation, I'd like to remind you of a few things we've studied in the past few units. Uh, first, how to solve a linear equation. Also, how to factor a quadratic expression And finally, one of the properties of real numbers that we looked at, actually it's a property of equations, the zero factor property. So, uh, in fact, for solving uh, solving a quadratic equation, there are four methods. Uh, what we'll look at today is the Solve by factoring method. Next session, we'll look at the quadratic formula. Which you may already know. It is the largest formula that we'll have to memorize this semester. But fortunately, there's a song, so it's very easy to memorize. Completing the square which we study because of its application to the graphs of circles and Uh, solving by grouping, well, we're really factoring by grouping, and it's, it's just a different way of using the solution by factoring. Also in this section, we'll look at applications of the solutions to quadratic equations. Um, applications usually include uh, rectangular areas, so uh, resizing pictures or paintings, or uh, fencing rectangular areas. Now I have a five step procedure to accomplish our goal solve quadratic equation, uh, step one is to put the given equation into the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, or put into ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. So we'll rearrange what we're given, unless it's already like that. Uh, the second step is to factor the left-hand side. So left-hand side of this equation is the quadratic expression. The third step is to use 
Z F P. That's the zero factor property. And this is a good place to review what exactly that is. It simply says that we have a, an expression a times b equals zero. This implies that either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. And we'll use that once we've factored the left-hand side to break our quadratic equation into two linear equations. You'll see what I mean in the example. The next step is to solve the resulting linear equations and that'll be our solution. However, we don't want to stop there. We want to actually do the check step. Plug the solutions back into the original equation to make sure that we do have the solutions. All right, so let's use this procedure to work through an example. says just to solve it, you can use any of the four me methods that I mentioned. Uh, we'll cover the other three next session. But here it says to solve by factoring, we need to use this method to find the solution. The first step is to put this into the ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. Now what we need, all we need to do there is uh, to get this six over to the other side. If I subtract six, well, I need to do that to both sides. I get x squared plus x minus six on the left-hand side, and six minus six is zero on the right-hand side. The next step will be to factor this quadratic expression. Now, I want to factor it, as we have in the past, into two binomial, two linear factors that are binomials. And the right-hand side, well, nothing happens yet. But the first terms in each of these, since my coefficient here is 1, x and x will do. So the, the main work in factoring the expression is to find what these second factors are. And for that, I'll use the table method. And in the left-hand column, I'll find the different ways of factoring negative 6 into two numbers. In the right-hand column, the sum of those factors. And ways of factoring negative 6? Well, 1 is a factor of any integer. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. Uh, another factor of negative 6 would be 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Uh, 3 is also a factor of negative 6. 3 times negative 2. 4 is not a factor. 5 is not a factor. Uh, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. Now I've got my left-hand column complete. Let's go through the right-hand column. Uh, 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. 3 plus negative 2 
is 1, and 6 plus negative 1 is 5. So the, the factors that I'm looking for, well, what's the sum that I'm looking for? It's the coefficient of the x term in my quadratic expression. So that would be this 1 here. And the, the factors I'm looking for are 3 and negative 2. A positive 3, negative 2. Got my expression factored. Brings me to the next step, where I use the zero factor property. Now, when you're doing this, you don't have to tell me that you're using the zero factor property. It's useful to know what it is. It's most important to know how to use it. And that is to say, uh, well, this times this equals zero means either x plus 3 is equal to zero, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. So I've managed to break this quadratic equation into two linear equations, which I can now solve. This is the, the part 4, is to solve these. They're each one step. This would be, uh, all I would need to do is subtract 3 from both sides. x plus 2 minus 3 is x equals 0 minus 3 is negative 3. With this one, all I need to do is add 2 to both sides. And so I get x equals 0 plus 2 is 2. And those are candidates for my solution. I'm not going to take it at face value, though. I'm going to do the check step, plug them back into my original equation. So step five of this procedure is to look at my original equation and substitute in my values of x one at a time. Uh, x equals negative 3, so if I put in negative 3 squared plus negative 3. Now, wait, what am I squaring here? This, this says I have negative 3 squared. What I really need, though, is negative 3 squared. And is that equal to negative? Is that equal to six? Well, negative three squared is nine plus negative three or minus three is equal to six. That checks out. So x equals negative three does solve the equation. Uh, for the other one, x equals two. If I look at two squared plus two, is that equal to six? And if I square the 2, 4 plus 2 equals 6, it is. And so I'll put a box or circle or highlight indicating that this is my solution. All right, now we'll uh, split up into groups of two or three to work on the worksheet for the rest of our time.